А, ну тогда, чтобы выключить... Hi everyone, and welcome back to the second AMA. It's been uh, two weeks, uh, so today I'll be alone. But uh, I, I know we promised we'll get uh, more people uh, as second guests on on these uh, AMAs. So Evan Cheng won the poll, and uh, I'm actually having a call with him right after this AMA. So I will ask him if uh, if he's ready to join the next one in two weeks. Uh, meanwhile, a small summary of the updates we've had in the past two weeks. Um, as you may know, we've onboarded uh, Ron Kai as COO of Parsic. And Ron Kai has uh, worked at Binance previously and uh, in the Singapore Police Force. So I think uh, he'll be a great addition to the team as COO and he'll provide his uh, leadership skills and management skills and, and knowledge of the industry. To, to drive us forward. So please give him a warm welcome. He'll be popping into, into the chats, uh, <clears throat> into the chats uh, from time to time. Uh, what else we've had? Uh, we've seen the uh, IQ protocol TVL, total value locked for the PRQ pool rise like almost 80% in the last two weeks, almost double. And we've had borrowing go live. We've had uh, the IQ subscriptions on the Parsic platform go live. And we will uh, we'll continue with these updates and, and feature rollouts. Next up is uh, the swapping function that uh, people who hold PRQ can swap it into power tokens, PPRQ, to use the platform for, for free. So now uh, let's get into the questions. So first question is, will PRQ boost 
be bridgeable to Binance Smart Chain so we can participate in BUSD PRQ pool will increase towards. Uh, yeah, I think incentive programs for providing liquidity on both banking swap and Uniswap makes sense. We are seriously considering of um, ending the PRQ boost program at some point and replacing it with another incentives program. Obviously, we will um, tell about this in advance, a uh, decent time frame. But uh, this is the idea we're having right now. It's more and more details to follow. And uh, we want to we want to set in motion some different incentive programs on both chains, ETH and BSC. And on that note, uh, on the last day in May, we discussed uh, having a DEX listing on the Solana blockchain. And I've already, already spoken to, to the team at Radium. And uh, I think we'll be going forward with this and expect uh, incentives for liquidity there as well in, in time. It was said at one point that uh, PRQ token would be used as collateral for a crypto loan. And can you provide an update? Um, yeah, we are looking into different DeFi platforms for, um, for borrowing and lending and to create a PRQ pool and for others to be able to use it as collateral. And um, something else we've been looking at is... Uh, is partnering with some really impressive DeFi projects who allow you to mint stable coins or take loans when, and, and you can put your LP tokens, your liquidity tokens uh, as collateral. For example, your Uniswap LP tokens, or why not even your IPRQ tokens, which are the interest bearing liquidity tokens uh, on IQ for the PRQ renting pool. So. We're still thinking about about this, when to do it, how to do it, but it, it might make sense. I think it could free up a lot of capital for for PRQ holders. Any idea when IQ protocol will be uh, compatible with Ethereum mainnet? So there is the issue of Ethereum fees. Not everyone has large amounts of PRQ, and this is why it's not really feasible having IQ on Ethereum right now. So we're most likely going on Ethereum, but only through a scalability solution like uh, Arbitrum. Arbitrum is something we're looking at and should be one of the milestones towards the end of this year. And in addition to Arbitrum, we'll have uh, we'll have the IQ version on Solana at some point. And uh, IQ protocol is actually EVM compatible, so it can be uh, deployed on uh, Polygon, on Cosmos's Ethermint, on Pol Polkadot's Moonbeam, and those all are options that we're really considering. It, it can exist multi-chain, and it will. Question about exchanges. Uh, yes, we are working on exchange listings. Um, we've um, actually applied to a number of them quite a while ago and the process is ongoing. Some of them have asked us to, to make some changes to, <clears throat> to our internal, internal, let's say technical issues. So, so this is all being implemented. We are definitely pursuing exchanges. We're having a lot of uh, headway, a lot of progress there. Uh, we've also just been recently, an exchange reached out to us, which is a large derivatives exchange uh, who has interest in listing PRQ. So exchange listings will come and even and tier one exchange listings will also come. No, no deadlines, but uh, there is no doubt.
What is the, what is the progress on end case and will it have any benefits to smart triggers or IQ protocol? So end case has been slow because our developer resources are spread thin between uh, both the Parsec platform and the IQ protocol. We started onboarding new devs already, searching for new ones. It's not easy to find uh, talent, but uh, thinking next year we will have uh, a commercially live version of end case that we can sell to to a lot of these uh, projects who are already in the pipeline and new ones as well um yes it will i think in case it will work uh, in conjunction with the parsic monitoring platform because those who will um, generate addresses for their users for their deposits for payments they will also need monitoring to automate different workflows and get that data in real time so most clients will be will be having both it's like some symbiotic relationship so i see the bondly question is uh pops up a lot so do any of parsic's estonian developers associated with bondly in any way are there any parsic employees that currently hold bondly tokens so no, the answer to both is no. We didn't know the Bondly team until uh, they had their incident. And, and so Parsec is an open platform for blockchain data where people can uh, get access to it, take snapshots, and uh, we're just a technology provider. We don't have any knowledge on, on what the exact case is. I've seen a lot of concerns over this, but... Uh, uh, and, and so all the blockchain data is public and Parsec is simply a technology stack that allows you to more easily access it and manage it. That is it. So we are no way associated with Bondly and, in, and uh, none of the Parsec team holds any Bondly tokens. So we've uh, used the snapshot technology for other projects like paid network. A uh, number of projects from the Qcoin hack like uh, Card Vertical, Noya Network called Centropy, and, and for the Parsec token as well after the Coin Metro incident last October. So really nothing else to say uh, on this because uh, we, to be honest, judge and jury, we don't know the specifics of, of this incident. We just provide blockchain data to anyone. Who has the copyright for the picture behind me? Will this be an NFT? I think this is a community drawn picture. Um, no, no, but Parsec NFT sounds like a really good idea. Hello, Tom. Can you share some information regarding the advantages of being an early lender in IQ? So the IQ protocol is a completely new model it's like risk-free collateral less renting of digital assets for for their utility for what they're meant to be used for anything no one has really done that to my knowledge and it is a little bit experimental but it means uh, also having the first mover advantage and a very very huge potential and uh, we will be incentivizing early participants uh, in uh, IQ, and there are two two things here to mention. So one is uh, is an incentive program we'll be announcing approximately this month. This is strictly for Parsic for the PRQ pool on BSC. So we will be uh, giving out incentives to people um, people providing liquidity in the PRQ pool this year, and uh, more details to follow as to how it works and and the size of the incentives and another thing is which is not yet set in stone but highly likely is that if iq protocol gains traction it gets uh, these projects and enterprises to create their pools and and use the iq model and the tvl uh, shows growth then uh, the IQ protocol will have eventually its own token, the IQ token, which will be a governance token with, with multiple use cases. 
and similar to what like Uniswap did when uh, after they uh, launched. So we will be likely uh, dropping some tokens to people who have interacted with the protocol. Again, this is not set in stone. This is just uh, an idea that is likely to happen. Uh, and it will probably won't happen anytime soon, as in, as in not in the next few months. But uh, this is where it's going. So from pre previous experience, has EVM compatible blockchains been easier to integrate with since uh, there would be some kind of standardization? Or are there still enough nuances to be challenging? And now EVM compatible blockchains are definitely uh, much easier to integrate. For example, um, since we already had the ETH integration, for the Parsec platform adding support for BSC and HECO it wasn't uh, that complex. So there are still some nuances uh, because of the nodes and the different TPS, uh, but but it's definitely much easier, easier than integrating something that's not even compatible like Solana. Since borrowing went live last week, there has been a large increase in the borrowing. Do we know where this has likely come from? So first of all, we are still um, funneling some of the previous and existing revenue that has been paid in either fiat or, or stable coins or other crypto assets into the protocol. And we onboard uh, users and clients monthly. So, so this is where this is coming from and expected to increase. This derivatives exchanges speak of, is it to do with crypto exclusively? Yes, to my knowledge. How long will IQ be classed as a beta stage? It's a good question because, for example, uh, the Solana blockchain is also in beta stage right now. And we have hundreds of uh, projects building on it, billions in TVL, so beta. Have you heard of Unibright? They're a type of a business enterprise cryptocurrency with a seemingly good network both in and out of crypto. I, I have heard of Unibright. I haven't looked into them in depth. I just, uh, why I've looked at them because their token model seemed like a good fit for IQ. So I think maybe we should reach out to them. Why can Parsec share 97% of its revenue? Where can I see exactly how much is 97%? Uh, so you can see it on the blockchain because all the renting fees, which are in essence the subscription fees uh, and revenue is, uh, they go to the smart contracts of IQ. And why it is 97%? It's uh, because we actually have a very good runway We've had a very good runway even before we raised our Series A back in uh, May. This year, uh, we've had enough runway for at least three years before that. So now we have even more. Um, and we, we can afford it and we want the API to APY to be at, at least a little bit attractive for people to be incentivized to, to um, Put their PRQ there. So as we uh, work to get more traction, more users, more clients, the revenue will increase, the APY will increase, and when it does, at some point, um, we might shift this uh, a little bit to more than three percent in our favor. But it's even more likely that we will uh, have a governance model where you, as token holders, 
can vote how much the split will be. Do you have any new product in the works that you can't talk about? Not a new product per se, but we've had a, a lots of uh, moving parts and a lot of features uh, for, um, for our existing products. I've mentioned it on the last AMA about the Parsec platform, how we already have historical data and we will be giving access to, to it for, uh, for projects and users and developers. And it will be fast. Uh, like the uptime will be will be great. So we will be building some analytics on top of it. We've talked about the snapshot technology so that uh, anyone can actually take any snapshot from one block to another and, and get what they want. We've talked about retrospective smart triggers, a, uh, a blockchain explorer, which is blockchain agnostic with built-in uh, monitoring and smart triggers. So, so lots to look forward to, including smart templates and the public projects uh, for, for smart templates, which I think will have great network effects as people will be able to monetize uh, interesting triggers that they create. Uh, for, um, we've covered NCase already on this AMA. And for the IQ protocol, the roadmap looks something like uh, getting the swap function live then uh, integrating a DEX so that the borrowing fees or the renting fees wouldn't be just paid in the native token like PRQ in our case, but also in any other assets that the chain supports and automatically swapped using a DEX integration into, into PRQ. Uh, so we've discussed ETH or layer two ETH uh, versions for the IQ protocol. Then there will be the NFT marketplace uh, powered by AQ protocol for renting different kinds of uh, anything really collectibles, art, uh, in-game assets. So you could uh, rent without collateral and people can, can earn income without risk by renting out their whatever, crypto punks, uh, axes, uh, like in-game assets, like you need a like I think Daniel mentioned this in the community chat, for example, you need a powerful sword to defeat your opponent in the game and you can rent it and and the owner can actually earn from a unique game asset uh, lots of lots of use cases here uh the solana version of the iq protocol and an important milestone that we hope to finish by the end of october is the iq sdk so iq actually uh it's split in two parts one is the actual protocol which is a set of smart contracts on the chain, the decentralized renting pools for borrowing and renting. And the other part is the IQ SDK, which is essentially a decentralized stripe. This would allow those projects who will deploy renting pools on IQ to accept uh, these power tokens or the rented wrapped expirable versions of their original native tokens. To be used, um, to be used, the, this uh, mechanism we call proof of hold. So for their utility, whether it's access to products, to services, subs watching subscriptions, voting rights, memberships, uh, anything really. So in any kind of uh, utility, and and this SDK will allow both on chain and off chain, especially off chain services to to monitor um, the amount of power tokens, the rented tokens that the user has and automatically uh, give them access to these uh, products and, and to a certain bandwidth of services. Can Parsec integrate with HBAR, given that HBAR already has state proofs? I think so. I think so. I will have to check with our tech team, but I think we've actually spoken to the Hedera Hashgraph team, and it is a public uh, DLT, so I don't see a reason why not. It's a the same as we we can integrate Phantom as well. 
Anthem is not really a blockchain. I think it's a uh, DAG, but it's a public uh, ledger, a public DLT, so we could. RSIC is a platform company or a software company. Um, it's a, some semantics here. Uh, well, it is a software company, that's for sure. But it also is a platform uh, where anyone can build their own solutions. So it's kind of both. And I think uh, this aspect, the platform aspect, will be showcasing it much more once uh, the RCQL 2.0 language goes live which will give uh, much more abilities for developers to script very creative, very flexible and powerful smart triggers. And um, yeah, we want to showcase how a developer with the some lines of code can easily create and deploy complex solutions, powerful solutions, which are scalable. Any possibility of any involvement between Parsec and SAP this year? Uh, don't know. No updates on this uh, yet. We've, like I said, we've been in contact with uh, with SAP since I think uh, last year. Uh, actually, Simon, our our from from Parsec, from our team is from SAP. But uh, hope, hope, yeah, fingers crossed that in the future we will work with SAP. How long is the financial runway for Parsec? So like I said, um, it was around three plus years before the fundraise, and now it's uh, around close to five years. And it also you know, changes a bit because the treasury is partially in crypto and partially in stables and fiat. So, so yeah, I think we're good. We're definitely good. We have enough for expansion, for scaling, uh, for, for aggressive growth, and to be here for a long, long time. If we get hit by a bear market, will this impact funding of projects? Uh, yeah. So a bear market does impact funding of, of uh, projects. I know this because uh, I've tried to raise during a bear market. It was really difficult. So during... Uh, like 2019, when we um, when we um, had our initial token offering on Coin Metro during the very bottom of the bear market, uh, I, we tried to raise from VCs um, for tokens, and uh, and uh, no one wanted tokens back then. Everyone wanted equity, and. So we re raised from from public from, from private individuals and uh, and on the public sale on Coin Metro, but uh, in twenty twenty, so no one wanted equity, everyone wanted tokens. So everything changes. With that being said, I don't think um, I don't think we will be hit by a bear market of that magnitude. So I think investors and VCs uh, now understand that uh, this industry is the future. And sure, maybe valuations won't be as ridiculous, but uh, it will still be relatively easy to get funding for a proper project with a good team. When can we expect changes to the IQ protocol beta? Like I said, the next up is a swapping function, uh, a few other small features like calculating API for each user individually and other things. And, and I think I went over the IQ roadmap um, just a little while ago. The most exciting things on the product roadmap is of course the NFT renting marketplace. This uh, pretty sure will be huge. And uh, the IQ SDK is extremely important because this will allow us to onboard a lot of projects. T 
you know of any end case competitors um is alchemy pay one i mean there are competitors i mean even bitco provides like this uh address and wallet deployment service there are a lot of them, but they are, first of all, extremely expensive. So end case will be very cost effective, not only because there will be no gas fees for address generation of ETH, but uh, also because the pricing one will be uh, very, very, very inexpensive. Uh, another thing is I think it will be very developer friendly and very flexible and it will come coupled with the parsec monitoring so it will give value adds that the competitors do not have i haven't looked at alchemy pay i have looked at it but uh for other functionality so so we can have the tech team look at it more How will you sell IQ subscription as a service to companies and what companies are you looking at? So if you mean how will we sell the IQ model, the use of the protocol, so it's an open source decentralized protocol anyone can use. Um, we don't, it's free. And the SDK will be a set of public software tools as well. But like was discussed already on the previous AMA, we have uh, we will have most of these projects using Parsec monitoring because they need it to see in real time eligibility of power token holders and give them automatic access to services, products, and features. Um, <clears throat> so we're looking at uh, right now we're taking the uh, obvious easy route and we're looking at companies. Um, projects who already have tokens who are already on the market and who could either expand or improve their tokenomics uh, or who have obvious use cases like you need a token to do something like you need a token to participate in ideo you need to hold it you need a token to get access to analytics you have to hold it so we are approaching these projects first because it's uh yeah it's it's obvious after that, we will be targeting uh, crypto projects who have not gone live, have not issued a token yet. And uh, then after that, we are looking at traditional companies who now have the ability to, to issue a token with uh, like pure proven utility, a token that makes sense. Can Parsec be an essential service provider for all crypto and non-crypto projects in the future? That is the goal, to be the industry standard uh, provider of like middleware and infrastructure and data for all crypto uh, companies and projects in the space. And as blockchain makes its way to traditional finance, I think this is where really our biggest opportunity is, our biggest market opportunity is in the traditional space as blockchain becomes the underlying tech. Should the incentive not be matched for people already lending in the IQ protocol? Um, I'm not sure I understand the question, but uh, definitely, definitely people already lending and when we do these incentive programs, they they will be they will be involved. Could you introduce more details about our new COO? So Ronkai is from Singapore. He was part of uh, Binance and Binance X and the Binance uh, Accelerator Fund that they started back in um, September. I think we were one of the first 10 projects, one of the first 10 portfolio projects of uh, Binance's fund. And uh, yeah, Ronkai was our main point of contact. He onboarded us to, to the Binance ecosystem. So he has definitely has industry connections and um, a lot of experience. So before he, that, he was uh, in the Singapore police force. So a lot of a lot of insight and experience for sure. I think he will help us grow very effective.
Could you explain the degree of anonymity that an entity has when borrowing from the IQ pool? Well, it's blockchain, so all you need is a MetaMask, and, and uh, that's it. You, you need to pay your gas fees. It's completely anonymous. You initially said that IQ should be live on ETH within a month or so, and now it's postponed indefinitely. Nothing major changed with ETH, so it was just poor planning and communication. Maybe maybe communication wasn't uh, at its best, but uh, we're doing ETH, but we're most likely doing is a layer two scalability solution like Arbitrum. It's still ETH. You still have to pay your gas fees in ETH. They will be just much cheaper, and uh, I think this is the best solution. And meanwhile, I don't see why uh, people who are interested in interacting with the protocol cannot uh, bridge to BSC. Now that IQ has solved the token utility problem, does Parsec see any advantage in building a tokenization incubation program from? For traditional companies to tokenize their services for subscription yeah we've played around with this idea like um but that basically means that we have to do a lot of consulting for these companies which we will do anyway first but we also have would have to have a platform for them to deploy the token create the smart contracts for them so it's a process uh, at first, we would prefer for the uh, companies or the projects to issue their own token. We would just help them deploy the uh, the uh, IQ renting pools and the blockchain subscriptions using the IQ SDK. But in the future, that sounds like uh, like a viable option. Um, another thing we're considering is actually uh, creating an IQ ecosystem fund to or a grants program, something like this, to invest in or, or uh, support projects that use uh, the build on IQ. The revised trigger UI UX is something that a lot of us look forward to. Is it being actively worked on? Will we see it before end of the year if all goes well? Yes, absolutely, end of the year, uh, before end of the year. So I think it's going to be great. I mean, it's uh, going to be much more, it's going to be simpler, more intuitive. Uh, it will come out with more features. So you can do everything from one place, from one dashboard. You don't have to go separately to your transports and to your triggers and to your projects. It's really complicated stuff. So now you'll be able to do everything from one, one place. Um, will be much more powerful, definitely. I've already seen the designs. It looks great. So I can to show it to you. How many monthly active users does the Parsec platform have? What is a month-on-month -month growth rate on this? So we have over 50,000 registered users. Active, it's difficult to count because it's not like we... So tracking like portal or platform visits is quite irrelevant because um, a user can deploy triggers and leave the portal and not come back for like three months and the, the trigger will still work and deliver valuable data that is being acted upon so so it's not really a good metric but uh i think it's time we should do an update on statistics a number of users number of active triggers number of events generated by these triggers so we'll do it this month IQ and borrowing are both live. Where is the main focus of the developers and what is the next hurdle for Parsec to achieve? Uh, well, the main hurdle is, is having enough developers and, and um, planning out the works that everything that we've planned can actually gets done in time because I already shared how much we have to do 
with IQ, it's the SDK, it's uh, the different the NFT version, it's IQ on E for Arbitrum, um, on Solana, it's, uh, yeah, there's a lot of work to do. And other parts of the platform as well, the UI, UX, uh, the historical data, the, um, the public projects and the parsql tool so we're doing the best we can and with more developers we already have like daily interviews with uh, engineers um, with senior engineers so by scaling the team i think we'll, we'll be able to move faster what's next on the roadmap i think i've shared quite a lot regarding the roadmap and who's the guest uh, next stream? Uh, I will I will talk to Evan Cheng in 20 minutes. So uh, if he agrees, let's have him. If he can't for some reason, then we can have him at a later date and then uh, bring um, Alan or uh, Anatoly. When do you imagine the Blockchain Explorer might come out? Yeah, well, for this, we have to complete some milestones first, including the full historical data and uh, everything that comes with it. So this will come after the UX UI update, after our historical data goes fully live, and um, after uh, smart templates, probably, probably Q1. I want to say Q4 this year, but most likely it's going to be Q1 next year. Can you give any names of NFT projects other than Super Farm that have expressed interest in Parsic? Now, I cannot dis disclose publicly, but there have been quite a few, including a few the big up and coming ones um, on Salon. So looking forward to working more closely with projects in that ecosystem. Can Parsec stop hacks in real time? Well, not really, it's, uh, it's not how it works. We, we have discussed a while ago with Anatoly that you know, in theory, if we had nodes like geographically distributed everywhere, then it might be possible to monitor the mempool and then and then enter your transaction uh, right when you see the hacker's transaction, the mempool with a higher gas fee to front run him. But, uh, but I don't know. Right now, it's it's not something we're focused on. Are you happy with the way Parsec is scaling? You have to onboard a lot of new devs and employees to catch up with the demand. Is everything going to your liking? Uh, well, scaling is not is not easy. I mean, we already have like over 30 people plus teams on outsource. So it's getting hard to manage and hence why uh, why we have Bronkai on board to help with this. And um, yeah, I <laughs> obviously, I want things to move faster, but um, I think uh, quality and uh, you know long-term viability is more important than speed. So we're looking to scale as fast as we can, while at the same time uh, building very motivated, uh, very talented team who are here for the long haul. I think it's more important than uh, saving a month here or there. <clears throat> and when do you imagine the public marketplace may be released? Um, so first step, which is already being worked on, it's, um, it's smart templates. It's basically pre-made uh, smart triggers for specific use cases that you can e either subscribe to or fork and change or input your own like monitoring targets. And uh, 
we estimate this will come out around the time of the new UI UX, so relatively soon, hopefully in a couple of months. So after that, we will be making the public marketplace. So once again, target is either end of the year or, or beginning of next year. It also depends on how fast we onboard engineers. If we can uh, scale the team quite fast, I think we can do it this year. How's the marketing doing so far? Will we see new videos in the YouTube channel explaining, for instance, like how IQ protocol works? Yes, now that we have Ronkai on board, um, then we can do a lot more things. Uh, so we are going to do videos for, for both the RC platform and the IQ protocol. We are ramping up the PR side as well, like content marketing, uh, op-eds, uh, opinion pieces. So expect to see a lot of content from us uh, from, from this month up until the end of the year and forward. Uh, what are your plans to get YouTubers organically be shilling about Parsec to get a raise on the price? Um, well, in terms of YouTubers organically talking about the project, um, I mean, most of it has been organic when you think back to like uh, last August or September where the, most of the coverage was. So most of those influencers, they announced a new project, uh, an up and coming projects, and they did organically. So I think there will be cycles as long as we show progress and, uh, and roll out new, new, new products, new features, we show traction, they will pick us up organically again, no doubt about this. Will there be a KYC requirement to interact in the protocol in the future? Uh, no, no. So it's a decentralized protocol, trustless, open for everyone. So no KYC there. Will there be like uh, maybe some years down the line an institutional version of, of IQ with KYC? Who knows? Who knows as um, DeFi and CFI are getting you know, closer and um, I think some some DeFi projects are already building something like this. It is possible, but currently no. This version of the IQ protocol it will be open to everyone. No KYC, nothing. Any plans for PRQ to list on Binance or Coinbase in the future? Uh, yes, the goal is to to be listed at one point or another over a certain period of time on all the major exchanges. When in a totally three hour session on IQ, so you think it's time? All right, um, yeah. I think, uh, why not? I haven't done anything with him for a long time. Let's do it. So uh, we'll announce it in advance so you can plan to not do anything else for three hours. And you can interest, you can listen in to the maestro. How much total Parsic borrow do you expect to see by the end of the year? Uh, I cannot give estimates because um, everything depends. Everything depends on um, on existing on existing users. Everything depends on if, how many we onboard from today to end of the year, and it depends on the PRQ price because um, the PRQ price will determine how much tokens you actually need to borrow. 
and and it will uh, depend on the liquidity in the pool. So a lot of variables here, but we definitely see it growing. For this year, we estimate up only. Yeah, seems like we run out of questions. Uh, good, because I have to run and do a call with Evan Cheng. Uh, thanks, guys, for tuning in. Um, if you have any other questions, you can post them um, in the community group. When I have time, I can answer those. And if not, then see you in two weeks. Bye.